I mean, people talk about shooting fish in a barrel. At this point, this is basically just shooting Chelsea in the barrel. Like, you really couldn't ask for an easier, like, easy kill system than this. G'day, guys. My name's Josh. Yo, can call me Ja Woodle. And welcome back once again to Seven Days to Die Alpha 17, where we are back in Ja Woodle Park for a very special episode. With Alpha 18 not too far away now, I think it's pretty safe to assume there aren't going to be any major updates to Alpha 17 anymore. So I thought that was a pretty good excuse to take a look back at Alpha 17 and put together a list of what I think are the top five basic and base designs to deal with the Alpha 17 zombie AI. Now, before I get into it, I already know what some of you guys are thinking. What the hell is this crap? This isn't what I signed up for. Unsubscribe! And that's fine. I totally get it. But because building bases and testing bases against the new zombie AI in Alpha 17 has been and is such a big part of what I do here, I thought it would be fun to go back and have a look at some of the old base designs, put them all in a row, and see what I think is the best. Well, down to the fifth best, really. I'm not going to go to the worst ones. That'll just take way too long. So the first base we're going to talk about, number five on the list, is the maze base. Now, you can actually make a maze base a whole bunch of different ways. This one, for example, is one of the first ones I ever built to combat the new pathfinding AI, but you can build it like this with like a, a pattern of corridors going through, but I quite like, especially for like early game kind of stuff, I quite like this one. The raised platform, little spiral base, I think I called this a snail shell back in the day. Something like this is very, very easy to knock up and it, can, it uses their AI to your advantage. So you can just stand in the middle here and they will just run around the outside, around the outside, all the way around, giving you plenty of time to try and take him out and survive the Horde Knight. If you bang a bunch of spikes along here as well, they'll be nice and slow, so you can take him out with uh, whatever gun you might have, or your bow, or if it really gets hairy at the end, this last little section down here, you can melee across and belt him in the face with whatever club or sledgy or pointy stick you might have in your possession. So the maze base started out as something very, very basic, but it is something you could use going into the late game as well, because it's an idea that holds true regardless of what stage of the horde you're currently on. So you can build up from those kind of basic kind of bases up to something like this, which is actually very, very cool and takes that idea and times as, times as it multiplies it, that's the right way to say that, multiplies it by four. So with this one, you're still using the maze concept, but you're making them run a whole lot further. So you can stay in here, and if you really wanted to, you could get rid of the bars up the top, but I've always been a range kind of guy rather than a melee kind of guy, I say while well, holding my gigantic purple sledgehammer, but you can stand in here and shoot the zombies, because each time they run uh, down or up one of these paths here, they're running straight towards you. So you get an easy shot with your bow or rifle or whatever, so you can pretty much take care of whatever business you need and then when you get to the very end over here you have a nice little wedge tip block so nice and simple nice and easy very very safe so that is why that is number five on the list because you can use it very early in the game and take it all the way to late game stages as well but it wouldn't be a Zawoodle video in Zawoodle Park if we didn't give it a test run just to make sure it holds up so I'm going to bring in the cheerleader I'm going to bring in Chelsea because Arlene can get rogered and we're going to see if it still holds up to the Zawoodle test. Got a nice little squad of cheerleader Chelsea's down there waiting to get to me. So, without further ado, let's just shoot a gun in the air to make sure I have their attention. Press the button. Alright, here we go. So, the, but they should run straight up that ramp. Yep, straight up. I mean, some of them jumped over, but that's okay. And they'll keep going all the way around. You could replace those ramps with stairs or just regular blocks because the AI doesn't particularly like... That's a shit shot. Doesn't particularly like, uh, like the actual ramp blocks. For some reason, they have quite a lot of trouble with regular ramps. Ramps. That's a nice headshot. You can just go through easy like all the way through But when they start getting close to the end you might start panicking You're thinking oh, I'm maybe not as safe as I might like to be Could we just put one into you man? It's good to get some decapitations. It just feels good. You know, what are you doing down there? You're gonna cut the ramp. Yeah, there you go There you go. Everyone's up on the spiral spaghettis run straight towards you, but if they do, if I don't want to leave you alive, because when they do get near the end over here, this is why the 1 8th block or the wedge block drops are important, because at the very end, you might be a little bit concerned. You might be thinking, I'm in strife, better pull out my melee, better get rid of the punch on, but you don't have to worry, because they get to here, they drop down right next to the ramp to come back up, and sure enough, they will run straight back up there. Easy as you like, safe as houses, it's a great design just to kind of build off, you can stay inside and do your crafting and stuff, 
during the night, or you can fight off the zombies if you want. You can do anything you like in here. It is a base of ample opportunity. Just finish off the last of the Chelsea's. There's one down. Oh, no, she didn't die from that. That one did. Got an arrow straight through the back of the noggin. Ah, uh, right into you. You didn't die either. God, she's tough. That chili outfit's it's really giving us some arrow pre uh, penetration protection. Right into you. All right, there we go. They're all dead. The base holds up another day. I really, really like this one. I especially like that you have like space in here to do your work. You can build an extra couple of stories onto it, build up into the sky, do whatever you need to do to make the base your home. Because eventually come like late game stage, you do, I mean, I like to have my horde base be my actual base at the same time. So I don't have to think, when's the next horde coming? Do I have time to get to the horde base? All that kind of crap. You just live where you fight. And it also means a little bit more risk too. Because if you fuck up and your base gets destroyed, well, then you don't have your backup over there. You actually have to restart again. And that's the most fun part about the game. Having risk and reward is what it's all about. But with number five on the list checked off, it is time to go to number four. So I actually had to very quickly rebuild this base somewhere else because the original one that I built, I built in a spot where a POI used to be. And it turns out completely destroying a POI and then replacing it with something else makes the game have quite a large heart attack. But the number four base on my top five bases of Alpha 17 is this bad boy here. The floating cage base, which may not look like much, I agree. But for what it does and for how little materials actually go into it, it is easily one of the top bases out there to deal with the zombie hordes. And the way that it works is this wonderful floating mechanism just here using nothing but iron sheets. And if you're not familiar with iron sheets, it's these blocks here. It's basically a piece of paper made out of metal. You can see that, like, well, I mean, it's going to be the vertical dimension when you put it over there. In fact, you can kind of see there that if you're on the right angle, that middle kind of dimension there is co almost completely invisible. But it's got no height to it. It's got no thickness. It's just, well, it's the size of a full block it takes up the space of a full block you can see if i try and place anything on this side it's going to go another whole way across in fact it's completely glitched the game when i tried to do that because it just freaked out a little bit but this whole thing is made out of sheets and all you do is just stack them on top of each other to get a lot of nice gaps in between if you're curious about how to actually build any of these bases i'll link to the guides on how to build them so the zombies just come over here get distracted by trying to get you up in that cage up there and just run around down here waiting for you to decapitate them with a bow or a shotgun or whatever you like. This won't work with melee at all. I mean, you could probably take out these uh, these bars here and try and reach down, but it's definitely a better option to just sit up here with your bow. You're protected from cops. You're protected from vultures by the bars and the poles. It works an absolute treat. It keeps you safe and lets you easily murder zombies. And at the end of the day, what better base could you ask for in seven days to die? So I just realized that the game didn't actually glitch when I placed that second block. It placed that second sheet straight onto the back of the first one. So even though there are two blocks there, it is still barely the width of one pixel. So this block here and this block here actually technically have a block in them, but the hitbox is so small that you wouldn't even know. And that's kind of how that system works over there. So look, I can break one of them and you've still got the other one there. So double the durability with none of the space. So you've got blocks, like all, all this area here, according to the game, is all one solid structure but according to the zombies that is not the case so i'll go up into my little cage up here i have a lovely squad of chelsea's waiting patiently for their turn i'll do the same thing as always and shoot a gun into the air just to get to make sure i have their attention i'll quickly use the bow again i do like the bow especially considering you could knock this up relatively quickly like the iron sheet i've talked about this before uh iron sheet is only worth 40 iron so you really don't need much to make this uh, like straight off the bat. You don't have to use iron either. You can make wood or cloth or whatever you really kind of feel like. I prefer iron just in case one of those idiots gets a lucky shot. But without further ado, Chelsea's, if you wouldn't mind, could you come over here and just test out my lovely base for me? Come on, there you go. Everyone over here, nice orderly file, and then just queue up right at the bottom. Right there, that's lovely. Look at them, you can just rain headshots. They're all underneath, you don't have to aim too hard. Just aim for the bobbing black masses, and you'll surely kill as many as you like. Easy as that. I mean, people talk about shooting fish in a barrel. At this point, this is basically just shooting Chelsea in the barrel. Like, you really couldn't ask for an easier 
easier, an easy kill system than this. Jesus, I almost feel a little bit bad. Look at all the Chelsea's that are missing their heads. It's just like a decapitation machine at that point. So the floating cage base is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Very easy to make, very safe, very secure, and very easy to get a bunch of XP very early. But you would think, given that it is just that good, it might be higher on the list. It is only number four because the three above it are just even better again. So, moving on to number three on the list, and it's something a little bit different to what I normally do. It works a bit differently, it's built a bit differently, but that's because it's designed to serve one solitary purpose. And that base is this one over here, the old AFK base. One of my favorite bases that I've ever built, because it is one of the few bases out there that allows you to survive a horde night with next to no damage and without you actually having to fight. So if you just don't really want, if you can't be bothered doing it for a time you just want to wait till morning you just can't be bothered dealing with all the ravenous brain-eating douchebags trying to knock down your door outside you build yourselves one of these now it works kind of similarly to the floating cage that i was just at a second ago but instead of using sheets it uses plates now you could use sheets for this if you wanted to i liked the plates because it's a little bit meatier gave it a bit more of like a, a stronger look to it maybe feel a little bit more secure but basically you have this platform floating up here that you build your base on on top of now you can build this base up here basically as big as you want to do it you can build it to the sky you can build it wide you can do whatever this is just the design that i went with at the end because all i wanted was just a cage a cage for me to stand in be safe in to look at and see the horde rolling through but they can do nothing to me the cops don't see me through the poles vultures can't get in through the gaps i'm safe from any air attacks or ranged attacks i'm safe from zombies attacks because down the bottom there is this and it's a lovely little fit, uh, pitfall of death going down to a recent addition that wasn't actually in the episode when i built this a nice little lava trap down the bottom now you can't get lava in seven days so instead it's just a pit of embers that set shit on fire because who doesn't love a flaming zombie so they come through here they try and get to you they can't and they fall down this gap here down to their desk break their legs get themselves sent on fire and then just a good measure get sent back up the ramp back to the top to do it all over again it works an absolute treat when i was testing it when i first built it i was actually surprised at how well it did actually work but yeah you, you don't have to fight the zombies at all so this takes the number three slot just because of how unique it is it's not like the other bases where you're you know racking up xp you're fighting the hordes off you know it's just a way for you to control the ai so you can better fight the horde this one's just a lazy man's horde you know if you just want to have a nap and sleep through the night like a regular person just build yourself one of these and you can keep all you want now it has actually been quite a long time since i built the afk base and in that time there has been some updates to seven days and i have learned some more things about seven days which means that if i did it all again i would do it slightly differently and the thing that i would do differently is i would get those uh wood plates that i'm using everywhere else here and just kind of cover up the windows like that i mean that's just a quick fix for now but i would make the room up the top here nice and secure just take away any sort of risk of that one dick bag zombie just thinking you were different to the rest of the group not like subscribing to the group think and coming up and causing some issues but if you like this then you're nice and safe and there's no way that no one can see you because you can't see out i only had those windows there so when i was filming this originally i could still get an angle of what was happening but now i know i can go like this and i can get out of my body have a full out of body experience and go fly around and have a look at the horde of zombies coming to get me all by themselves without having to actually look through the base wall so here we have an assortment of different zombies we have the normal bo boring basic vanilla zombies they're gonna run at me on the ground we have the cops and we have the vultures i was just extolling the virtues of this base protecting against these dick bags so i figured i should probably put my money where my mouth is and rather than you guys just taking my word for it i would actually just show you so let's put my hard back up so i can choose my gun properly shoot in the air a couple times to get the attention and ai on oh yep Come on, there you go. Take us, took them a second for them to realize what they were doing. But look at that. See? Just like that. Straight down. Straight down to the depths below to catch on fire. Burn up like an overcooked steak. Now run back up that ramp, all the way up the top, to do it all over again. Meanwhile, the vultures don't know what they're doing. They've got no plan of attack. There's no way they can come in to try and get me. The, the most they're going to do is kind of sit on the top if they do decide to do that. But for the most part, they're just not even going to get close to it. So these idiots will just run and run and run and trip over themselves like the uncoordinated douchebags that those fat fucks are fall downstairs get set on fire uh oh and probably explode 
Yep. Oh, there we go. There's one. There's one explosion. One death already. The cops are exploding all over the joint and killing Chelsea cheerleaders and ruining my lovely fire pit. That's just rude. I know you can't vomit at me, but you don't need to ruin my fire pit. Oh, that took ages to build. It's one of my favorite things to build the old fire trap. You ruined it. But the last of the Chelsea's is still running around doing what she needs to do. So that's the thing. You can spend all night just doing this, doing nothing, absolutely nothing, until the zombies eventually lose interest. Then you can, uh, using your sweet out-of-body experience, roll over and smack them right in the head. Come here. There we go. Can't see it, but she took a sledgehammer to the face. Even after all this time, that base still tickles my gizzards just a little bit at how well it works. Being able to spend an entire horde night doing nothing, not having to fight or do anything for your survival, just being able to put your feet up and sip on a couple of frothies while the zombies run around and pose zero threat to you, that's just, that's just awesome. That's, that's what I love. Being able to find some way to play the game how you want to play. You want to be a lazy git, be a lazy git and build yourself an AFK base. But that is only number three. To get to number two, we have to fly over the evil can evil bus jump and all the other stuff in here the racetrack the original firing range everything in here i love flying through this world sometimes it's like all the memories that comes back when i get to fly around the world park it always just makes me a happy boy but the number two base on the top five alpha 17 horde bases is this one over here which is one of the most recent additions to the world it is the malay corridor the last in several iterations of malay only horde bases and by far the best so this base just like the other ones i've talked about so far relies very heavily on being able to predict and control how the zombies think Think and move. With the Alpha 17 update with their pathfinding, if you didn't know already, they will find the most direct route to you possible or go through any weak point that they could possibly find in your base. They're basically super duper super smart engineer zombies that still want to eat your brain for some reason, even though they're probably smarter than or I am at the very least. But this base works by controlling all the zombies up through this central channel here while you kick around on the outside, happy as Larry beating their skulls in with a sledgehammer or a club or your fists or whatever you can find. Throw rocks at them. I don't care. On either side, you have three poles making this L shape here, which is slightly different to how I originally did it. I originally had some uh, ramps down the bottom here, but doing it this way, you have the maximum possible blocks between you and the zombies. So there's three lots of blocks here, three lots of, H three lots of HP, rather, for them to beat through. So by far, their easiest option and fastest option is to run very slowly, thanks to the barbed wire down there, all the way down here to try and get around the outside, around the outside to get to you. Zombies at the end of the day are all just trailer park girls. They're going to do what trailer park girls do and that is go around the outside. But when they get down here, they will fall down this bit here, down the 1 8th block gap, which I've built a million times before. If you're not sure how that works, check any of the builds that I've done recently and you'll see. And they get down here, they get disappointed because they haven't tasted your sweet juicy brains and run back around the front and do it all over again. I just got hurt on something. I'm not sure what. That was a little bit weird. There's no, no, like, ninja cactuses down here or anything. It's just... Just an imaginary barbed wire spiked me in the foot. All right, cool. Now I have tetanus. But yeah, they come back up here and then they give you another ample opportunity for you to cave them in as they run down here. Very, very simple. Very, very effective. Now, as I said, this is like another iteration of something I've built previously. It is the best one. It's using pretty refined materials, but you could build this out of weak things. I, I, again, check the guide on the base so you know how to build it. But this thing works like an absolute treat. That's probably all that really needs to be said about it. Hey, it's it's not the most complex base, it's a very, very simple idea, but it works very, very well. Quite often, the most simple solutions are the most effective solutions. So all it is, is just a matter of keeping you safe, keeping them moving in the direction you want, and then making it so they can't actually reach you in the end. And all you have to do is rely on your melee abilities. So if you're me, you probably don't have a hope in hell. But if you're someone out there who's actually good at punching zombies in the dick, then you probably have a pretty good shot at surviving. So, I've got a bunch of Chelsea's out there, and a couple of dogs as well because it's a little bit hard to hit like lower zombies like uh, like spiders and dogs and stuff coming through here so i want to show you guys what it's like to try and do that we'll fire some bullets into the air to get their attention press the big red button please come over here if you wouldn't mind guys guys this way look over here there, there you go there you go i just needed to like, you know, really work to get your love and affection oh the flying dog hordes are back never mind them they can float around outside as much as they like i will focus on the chelsea's i'm pretty sure i saw a dog go 
go out to the left somewhere. This is all you gotta do. You know, it's nice and easy. Just kind of backtrack with just a little bit. We keep on moving just down the row, and you can keep on belting the zombies as you like. No real risk to me, no real risk to anything other than the zombies getting their heads caved in. It's just like a conga line of impending death. They run up there, they get to the end, they fall down the bottom. They do take a little bit of fall damage, but not too much. They do sometimes die when they fall if you've already hit them a couple of times. But it's just that simple, you know? I'm nice and safe. They're not doing any damage to anything. I can just take my time and pepper them with a nice purple sledgy shot. She died, but I didn't see myself getting any experience. Oh, she didn't die even. She was juking. She fainted. I hit her in the tit for her, de for her deception. I hit you. I hit you. Try and keep on the right spot. So I get some nice easy hits. Her head exploded. Oh, it's just, it's just that simple, you know? Hit her right in the booty too. Man, I'm just like... I'm doing some real damage here. I need to take a step back to stop them actually swinging at me. If you get right up on the poles, they do take swings sometimes. Standing back here, I mean, I'd like to hack some, like, uh, like a wall or something back here to protect me. But that's all you got to do, you know? Just make sure you're in the right spot, swing a sledgehammer, and just rain death, deathly blows upon the zombie population. Before I show you guys the number one Blood Rune Horde base for 7 Days to Die Alpha 17, I want to take a moment to show you guys a couple of honorable mentions. The bases I think are really, really cool ideas and work really, really well, but aren't really feasible options to build in a normal survival playthrough, but they're cool enough to warrant a mention all the same. All the ones I've mentioned so far have been, you know, reasonable sized bases that can be built in a decent amount of time by a regular Jeffrey using a normal amount of materials. But these ones are the kind of bases you build when you've hollowed out the planet, survived to day a thousand, and just want to build something ridiculous. So the first one I want to show you guys is this bad boy here, the Trader Cliff Base. And this thing took me an absolute dick load of time to build, even using creative tools, hollowing out all around the Trader down to Bedrock took an eternity, and it almost made my game crash a whole bunch of times. But it works spectacularly. It's like the AFK base on steroids. All the zombies do is jump off the cliff down to bedrock and then try and beat their way through the protected pylon that the trader sits on. The, these blocks can't be damaged, so the zombies can never ever reach you. You can either get over here with a gyrocopter or building a bridge and getting over it. But either way, once you're here, you can just chill out in your sweet purple room, watch some TV, sip on some nice cold frothies in your fridge, and just enjoy the apocalypse in complete and utter safety. Again, totally not buildable in survival. At least I would never try and build it in survival. It would just take way, way too long. But hey, it's a cool idea and it's kind of fun. So that was the first honorable mention. Then there's this bad boy, the Blender 2.0 which is by far the most complicated base I've ever designed. There's like a hundred little pieces that all fit together intricately to work together to make this base work properly. And if any one of those parts fails, it has a bad effect on the rest of the base as well. So because it's so complicated, that's why I didn't put it into the top five. It's just not something I would ever consider building in a normal survival playthrough, but it's really fucking cool. Also, you have this drawbridge here, which is made out of a garage door, but you can't actually place a garage door like that without going and modifying it and enabling advanced rotation. So that's a big shame because I freaking love that. The zombies fall through it for every single time. It's like, a failure free uh, drop drawbridge and it drops them down into the blender of doom. It's, it's a really cool thing. They come up, they run across there, they run straight off, straight down there and get turned into mint zombie very, very quickly. And if they do happen to survive that, they then come up these ladders over here all the way back up, go back around and do it all again. It works flawlessly, but it's just too complicated. It's just too hard to build to be one of my top five. It's a, it's a top five idea, but like in an actual like uh, a base that someone will go out and build for themselves and use, it doesn't quite make the cut. The last honorable mention goes to this bad boy, the Pool of Death, which is the most fleshed out idea I've had for a base. As a fully self-contained unit, it's got everything I've ever wanted to put in there. It works the same kind of way as the Malay Corridor over there, where they move through the water here and it slows them down. The only drawback to this is the water itself. You have to be able to hit headshots consistently because you can't shoot through the water. You can't hit them below the neck. But also, placing all this water in the right spot, it's, it's just a nightmare, you know? It's impractical, which is why it didn't make it into the top five. But as a whole system, I freaking adore this base. It's got the same kind of thing as they drop through there. You're nice and safe. Run back to the start to go through the killing area again. But it also has, just in the back here, a nice little screamer trap. So you can, like, lure a screamer up this ramp 
up through this drawbridge, down through here, down to the bottom, and have a nice little pet screamer to call in a bunch of hordes and a bunch of zombies to farm XP from. So it's got everything a growing survivor needs, everything you need to get as much XP and be as safe as possible. As I said, the most fleshed out idea I've ever had. It's one of my, it's, it's one of my pets. It's one of my favorites. It lives very close to my heart and I'll always be a big fan of the pool of death with the added extra screamer trap at the back. But it is not the number one horde base. I would have liked it to have been, but it's just too impractical. So for the number one horde base, we actually have to go to the outskirts of Shawoodle Park, leave the area just a little bit and travel north. I'm sure you all knew how this was going to end up. You all knew what was going to be on top of that pile. The ultimate base in Seven Days to Die is, of course... <laughs> nah, of course it's not. Of course it's not this one. I just couldn't help myself. That one can't be the best base in Seven Days to Die. Doesn't look anywhere near enough like a dick. Well, here we are. We have reached the end of the top five countdown. My first ever and maybe the only ever countdown video that I'll probably ever do. If you have watched my channel before or if you have browsed the 7 Days to Die subreddit before, this will come as absolutely no surprise to you. This is the number one, the best 7 Days to Die Alpha 17 Blood Moon Horde base. It is the... Killing Corridor, as if it was going to be anything else. The Killing Corridor is by far the strongest, the most reliable, the best Blood Moon Horde base that I've ever seen, thought of, heard of, anything of. It is the absolute bee's tits. And it works so well because it is just so damn simple. I've come all the way out here to the Killing Corridor I used to fight off the day 7,000 Horde not long ago because it's purple and black. And clearly, I'm a big fan of purple and black but it works really well because there is just so little to worry about. It works the same as the Melee Corridor. In fact, the Melee Corridor is based off the Killing Corridor. You can probably see the naming convention that's going on there. And all the zombies do is just cruise on down the corridor here, slow down by the barbed wire. They can't touch the barbed wire and do any damage to them or the wire itself. So you don't have to do repairs because the poles are here to protect you. And all you do is to sit down here in a nice protective cage and rail them in the face with whatever projectiles you can get your hands on it's just that simple and it works so well because it's that simple it's my baby i went through all of the testing in shavuto park to get to the point where i came up with this and i love it and i use it for everything so it is bar none i'm sure you'll agree with me the best uh blood moon horde base out there in the game but just like all the other ones this wouldn't be complete without a couple of chelsea's barreling down to their death I'm feeling pretty brave and a little bit stupid. I'm not even going to go inside my little safety bunker over here, which is a little bit dumb. If you have a killing corridor and you've built it right, the only way that you die is if you're like me and you accidentally fall out of your bunker and go face the horde face to face. You only die when you accidentally kill yourself. And even when you die, your killing corridor will still be here to pick up the pieces for the next horde night. So I'm out here all on my lonesome with some Chelsea's all over the joint. If you wouldn't mind joining me, love, I just wanted to spawn some down here so you can see that they are immediately run back up to the start of the corridor and then all they do is just run straight towards you just like that and you can just line up headshots all day every day it's just that simple if you're not using a killing corridor in your playthrough already then you are missing out on some easy peasy xp i have no idea if this is going to work in alpha 18 in fact i'm reasonably sure that i mean they'll probably try and patch it out somehow i will find a way to to make the killing corridor work in alpha 18 when i get my hands on it but for Alpha 17, in all the iterations that have been, this is the only way to go about it. This is the easiest way. It's almost a cheese move at this point. It's just so easy. You're taking advantage of how the AI works, but that's what you got to do. If you want to survive the Horde, you got to play it smart. And there's no smarter play than the Killing Corridor. Anyway, guys, there you go. That is the end of my top five countdown of the best bases in 7 Days to Die Alpha 17. It was fun to go back through and look at all the things that we've done. Look at all the progress we've made through like Alpha 17.0 all the way to 0.4 with every new update bringing just a little bit of difference. A little bit of tinkering to the AI so needed another base to be designed for it. And this is where we ended up. I could just sit here all day and just watch them run around in circles and not have to worry about anything. But I'll have to come back and play some more 7 Days to Die in another episode because this episode is done. So thank you you guys, for watching, most of all, thank you to the patrons of Patreon who made this episode possible. If y'all like, make sure the like button, 
down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. If I don't talk to you there first, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.